Welcome to the solution video for this project. Awesome. So I just want to really kind of go over, do a brief overview of kind of the layers that I'm using here so you can kind of see what's going on and then I'll walk through it. So starting from the front and you can do that by going from top bottom in your layers, we have this little water puddle in the bottom that I kind of did to thematically look like this lady is jumping out of or into the water. We have the woman in the middle who's flying up. We have our splash text. Below that, we actually have some detail. We got a little uh, woman, the same woman in the background, just adding some more detail. We have these little mar brush strokes here that look like uh, they're coming out of her hands and feet to add a little bit of, bit of motion. We have a couple texture layers, just giving some texture to the background. And then of course we have the background layer itself, which is the image of this, this lady jumping. All right, so hopping to our project six, let's just start working on these layers. So we're gonna make this layer of her jumping bigger. So holding the option key down, just gonna put it so that she's pretty much centered in frame. The next thing we're going to do before we actually add any texture is make sure we have the selection of her and we are going to have that um, to work with later on. So I'm actually going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to put one in the background on the bottom. And then for this top layer, we're just going to make our selection. So there's different ways you can do this. I'm just going to do it with our quick selection brush. So I'm just going to paint over, make sure you have the layer of her selected so that Photoshop knows where to make your selections. This is just kind of a quick rough selection because I am going to go into our select and mask tool window panel whatever you want to call it and improve this this one is a little bit diffi more difficult than some of the other ones we've worked on in the past because the colors of the background of her hair of her hands of her shoes are a little bit more similar something like that looks pretty good though yeah, the hair is pretty difficult. So let's just go in and start selecting and masking. Wow, see, so it selected this whole piece of the wall over here. So first off, we do have our smart radius on, radius up. That was a little bit too high. Eight pixels looks pretty good. So now with our quick selection tool, I'm going to subtract, holding the option key down, subtract that part of the wall. Subtract this part in front of her face. And that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna zoom in, get these details. Quick selection, let's make sure we get her shoe. So the more you do this, the more Photoshop's gonna know like, oh, you want this specific color of beige, not this other very similar specific color of beige. Let's go up to her, hair, her hand, same thing arm right here and when you have a person in motion like this it does get a little harder depending on the photo because there can be photo blur in it and that kind of is hard to for Photoshop to know where is the edge of this we are going to be using our edge refine tool so let's go ahead go use our edge refine tool and with this we're just going to paint over our edge edge of our hand mm, that did an okay job but we're gonna go back in here make sure we select our hand mm, let's undo that actually sometimes you just gotta mess around with it until it works let's start out with our hair so if we're painting over our hair if you're painting on you're like whoa this is getting too much but it's when you unclick that Photoshop actually finishes the job and and actually makes that selection so that's pretty good let's go down to her feet we have these shoelaces that does a pretty good job too these ones too down here switching between our edge refine edge tool and our quick selection tool 
And you can also do this um, using a layer mask after we've made this main selection to get super specific and super fine. So, you know, if we were actually doing this for like the cover of a magazine or a print advertisement, you would want to be perfect with this, right? We're just doing this for fun. So I think that's pretty good for now. We might just smooth out just a little bit, add a little bit of feathering. And then for our output settings, we will choose layer mask and click OK. All right, so that's pretty darn good. And so let's actually hide these layers right here. So now this lady is directly over this background. And for now, I am going to link these two because if I move the background at all, I want this top layer to move as well. All right, so now let's start adding some texture. So we have this grunge texture. Let's make this the full color or full size of this image. And that's pretty cool, right? Just simply like that is, is cool. You could do a lot just with that background texture. But we want to use a blend mode. So I'm going to go, hmm, I'm forgetting what I used for the original project. And I don't necessarily have to match it exactly. I used hard light at 75%. Hey, I was on hard light. <laughs> that looked good to me, but it was a little bit too much. So we're going to decrease the opacity to 75. We're also going to turn on our water layer. And I think I did multiply. And again, let's drop this down to like 50% or something. So that's, that's pretty cool right now, having that, that texture to it. The next thing we're going to do, let's just go ahead and add uh, this other layer of her in the background. So we're just going to copy and paste this layer and that one that moved from the top, we're going to actually move up and put it in the background. Now the reason I did that instead of just moving this background one is, and we can actually lock these grunge textures in the background, is because if I move this one that I had that I had copied from that's underneath, it's linked to this bottom one and I don't wanna move that. So we're gonna move this top one, make it bigger, and we're gonna just put it behind our woman jumping and let's just change our blend mode. Screen is pretty cool, color dodge. Again, I can't remember exactly what I had chosen in our original project. Just trying to find something cool, actually. I use Color Dodge. That's kind of cool. So just, again, adding these little details, right? So again, you can kind of just keep working at it. Let's add our text. Splash. Okay, so it's super small. You can't see it, but I did type in the word splash. Let's change the color to white. We have to place it by pressing the return key before we can change the color. So that's something you might run into is if you're moving or resizing your text and then you're like, oh, I wanna change the color. Oh, it's not letting me. It's because you have to place your item. Kind of like we've seen before with our Im uh, different images. Now the font that I'm using is called Franchise and I'm pretty sure this is not one that is available on most computers. So you're gonna have to find it online just for personal use or just pick another cool font that you like. And I'm gonna put this right behind our person jumping. And this is the kind of cool stuff that you'll get better at as you create more and more graphics. But, you know, you don't know, you can't see exactly what this says, but you know it says splash, right? Because she's jumping, but maybe you don't know quite enough. So to make it more obvious, we're going to add a little puddle down at the bottom, right? I realized in our other option, it's not the water texture that is this layer right here. It's this water layer right here. So we're gonna make this a little bit bigger and then put this above the grunge texture, put it to multiply at 50%. And then this water texture layer is what we're going to create the sort of puddle at the bottom with. So how are we going to create this sort of circular bit down here? 
Again, there's lots of ways, but we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool again, but I'm gonna show you a different option. So say we make this selection at the bottom like so. Let's put it down just a little bit. Instead of doing that whole copy paste thing we did with the coffee cup, which um, ends up not being the best way to do it because then that new layer becomes non-editable in the sense that we can't get back the rest of the image. We want to use a layer mask. And so with the selection made, we can just click the layer mask button. And now we have this puddle down at the bottom using that ellipse mask that we had created. Now what I did with this puddle down here you can see there's this kind of texture at the top of the layer. And if I change this from hard light to normal, you can really see what it looks like. See how it has this texture? We did that with a brush. And so we've seen this before when we've edited layer masks. We've used the brush to add white or black. So down here, you see if we add white, we will add back this water. Black will get rid of it but we could actually change what the brush looks like. So to get to the brush settings, you can go up to window, brushes, or click this little folder button with the brushes on it. And now there are a ton of different options for brushes. I can't remember exactly which brush I used, uh, but you can just pick any of them. Here you can download brushes from online. You kind of get a preview of what the brush looks like down below. So I want one with like a lot of texture. Something like that looks pretty cool. And now with this brush set to white or black, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I can either erase with it or add with it. I'm just going to brush over like this. Now that looks a little bit different than my original one. I think I used a different brush. Let me try one of these other ones. Maybe this one's pretty cool. That one's pretty cool. Okay, so if we use that one, and again, you can use the black brush to add or to subtract or the white brush to add. So let's do the white brush. Let's add some to the top edge. And it just gives a little bit of a texture to the top of this puddle. I actually think I like the one from before that I used. All right, I think I found the right one actually. I think it's this 306 brush. So let's get out of here, let's make it a little bit smaller. And again, with your brushes, you can hold the Control Option key down on your Mac to make it bigger or smaller. That would be Command Alt on a PC. So now we can add some texture. I don't know if that's the right one, but it's just adding to it, adding some texture, making, making it a little bit more unique and different. Now let's make this, turn this to hard light. Now we had it. And I think I want to move up our girl. So we're going to move all of this up like so. And we'll move our text up as well. You might as well link the, the girl, the te splash text to the girl. That's pretty good. And then lastly, we want to add some brush strokes to her hands and feet to really accentuate the motion. So unlike what we've done before with the brush in terms of editing a layer mask, we want to use the brush, a brush to actually brush on something completely new to actually like paint on our project. To do that, we need to do it on a new layer. You can brush on an existing layer, but it can't be a smart object. But for this case, we want it to be on a new layer. So just click this new layer button down at the bottom right next to the trash can. You can see a layer was created, and this is just a completely blank layer at this point, but we can brush on it. So let's change our brush to something a little bit softer. Something like that's pretty cool. You could change the size, spacing, all kinds of stuff here uh, with these settings as well. Something like that looks kind of cool. And there's all sorts of different um, options here in your uh, in your settings down here that can adjust your brushes as well, okay? So now let's make sure that our color is set to white. So we have white selected and we're just going to add some brush strokes. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you're using a tablet with a stylus, this would probably come out even better. 
something like that. It's kind of cool. All right, so that looks pretty cool. All right, so now let's put this underneath our uh, text layer. That's the layer we want it under. And then let's change the blend mode. Something like overlay or soft light is pretty good. I think overlay looks good. And now if we just compare to this one, we can see our brush strokes were a little bit different in this one coming from different angles, but you get the point. These are all the different layers we're adding on top of each other to make this a dynamic image. I think that the lady herself could use a quick adjustment layer for uh, contrast and brightness. So I'm gonna use the curves adjustment. So with curves, we're gonna add just a little bit more exposure and we want this just to apply to her. So we choose this clipping mask option. And now that's just going to apply to her instead of the entire, any other layers. Creating some more dynamic contrast. Something like that is actually pretty cool. Awesome, so that is my project. I would love to see what you do with this project. And as always, tag me in your post on social media. Share it on Instagram or Facebook. Tag me at Phil Ebener or at Video School Online. Cool, thanks so much, and we'll see you in another lesson.